This is the Channel One Cup uh, international tournament that happens in Russia every year. This is Russia and Finland. They're tied two goals apiece in overtime, which is a three on three affair. And Russia, they're wearing CCCP throwback uniforms, which I don't, I don't know all about that. But they have a good chance to score here. Look at this. This guy drags this defender too deep. This guy's got to commit. Which one's he going to guard? These two can play a little pong with them, so they drop it back to him. He does one move to the backhand, and then he should have passed it right away. Takes a little longer. Finally passes it, uh, but the goalie slides into perfect position, and the, the finished defender has his stick down to block this pass and then eventually block this shot which who knows if that was going to go in. So great job by Finland there. Bad job by Russia. But because they have control of the puck, they have decided to pull their goalie and go four on three. So now they're tied in overtime of the championship game, and they have an empty net. So possession is important, and they're really just going to have to score right now and make it worthwhile. This is a new strategy I guess some coaches are doing. So they pass around, wait for the perfect opportunity, pass around, wait for the perfect opportunity. This guy says, screw perfect opportunity, I'm just going to force it, which is an awful play, especially with what's on the line. But they regain control, and they pass it, they pass it, they pass it, and then he says, screw perfect opportunity, I'm just going to force it. Shoots it, hits that dude in the ass. Now there's a fast break the other way. He's got the puck. The empty net is there. Uh Uh-oh. Tripping. Penalty, which not only means penalty, it means game over. Because if there's a penalty with the net empty, it just means the goal is awarded. So that's how this whole tournament ended. And look, he gets the puck first, which I thought for a second would matter. But the rules say that if, in the opinion of the referee, a player makes contact with the puck first and subsequently trips the opponent in doing so, no penalty shot will be awarded but a minor penalty. Because I thought, well, it's got to be a penalty shot, but there's no goalie on the ice, so that's a pretty easy penalty shot. But they do confirm that if, when the opposing goalkeeper has been removed from the ice, a player in control of the puck in the neutral or attacking zone is tripped or otherwise fouled with no opposition between them and the opposing goal, Thus preventing a reasonable scoring opportunity, the referee shall immediately stop play and award a goal to the attacking team. Writing rules and being a lawyer, it sounds so exhausting, huh? So anyway, that's how this whole thing ends. And that dude's got to make up his mind. Is he going to go left with his head? Is he going to go right with his head? He chooses to go left. He gets his hands in the net. He scores himself. He gets up, and I don't know, they won. No one is truly excited. It's like a walk-off walk or a walk-off balk in baseball. It's like, all right, we did it. We won. Uh, All right. And even the Russian team's like, okay, we lost. Uh, Weird strategy. Maybe don't pull the goalie in a tie game again and and lose the puck. So, yeah, that's just an interesting thing that happened in hockey that someone put in the request form. And thanks, because I didn't know. I never seen a gold medal game won without putting the puck in the net before. It's my first time. If it's your first time, comment below and we'll all enjoy it together.